WaveLab is the world's leading audio mastering application. Professionals around the world depend on WaveLab every day, and these videos are designed to help you understand the new features and capabilities in version 8. Now before we get into the details, let's review how to navigate WaveLab. WaveLab is organized into sections called workspaces. Each workspace is streamlined and optimized for a specific activity, and you switch between them here. For example, the audio montage workspace is used for assembling multiple audio files. A common use of the audio montage workspace is placing all of the songs for a CD in their final order. And the audio montage workspace has tools and menus which are optimized for this sort of activity. But let's say you need to do a little more work on one of the audio waveforms. You can quickly switch to the audio files workspace to analyze and edit the material. And the batch processing workspace has tools and menus designed to make the new batch processing capabilities easy to find and use. Here, you can assemble multiple files, then process the entire group. Then back in the audio montage workspace, you can assemble those audio files and render them into multiple formats. You can also perform CD burning, and you can prepare DDP exports. The podcast workspace has all the tools you need for preparing and uploading podcasts. You also have a control window workspace for hosting and organizing tool windows. You can customize each workspace to match your workflow. They can be as simple as a window with a single menu, or a sophisticated arrangement of command bars and tool windows. Each workspace contains a menu bar, command bars, a tab group that hosts the files to edit. This is the central part of the workspace. A set of specific tool windows. Which tool windows are available depends on the workspace and they can be activated and deactivated individually. A set of shared tool windows. Shared tools also vary according to the workspace. You can use each workspace individually as we've seen, but they're also designed to work in concert with each other. For example, you can import multiple audio files for editing. Then you can batch process them for consistency. Next, you can assemble them into a montage and render it. Finally, you can export the final render as a finished podcast. All of this without ever leaving WaveLab. Okay, let's get into the new capabilities of WaveLab version 8. WaveLab 8 introduces a speaker management system that allows you to set up and switch between eight speaker configurations. The first step is to open the Options menu and then the new VST Audio Connections menu. Navigate to the Playback tab. You can also click on the Speaker icon in the Speaker Control panel to open the same dialog. Select a speaker configuration from the drop-down. Give it a name that fits for this configuration. You can also name each channel. Then select the device output each channel should use. And you can save all of this as a preset here. Now we can access these configurations directly from the speaker control panel at the bottom of the master section. Speaker switching takes place immediately before the audio hardware, so there's absolutely no plug-in processing or latency. You can adjust the gain for each configuration using the volume icon, but there are a couple of things to keep in mind. First, speaker gain is not taken into account by the meters. This means that the signal could clip even if the meters do not indicate clipping. Also, changes to the speaker gain have no effect on the file rendering or CD writing. However, changing the gain control does have an effect on the samples passing through it. As a result, the dither settings are reset when you adjust speaker gain. 
This means the change in dither may be noticeable when monitoring quiet passages. However, this LED helps keep track of what's going on. Dark green means no change is being applied and dithering is preserved. Red means that positive gain is applied, dithering is canceled, and there is a risk of clipping. And the orange light means that negative gain is applied, so there's no risk of clipping, but the dithering is still canceled. Two more notes. First, the gain settings are saved with the speaker configuration. And second, WaveLab defaults to using configuration number one, so it's a good idea to keep it free of any gain adjustments. Now let's talk about loudness, specifically the EBU loudness standard R128, which establishes well-defined methods to measure loudness, dynamics, and peak values. It also defines new target reference values for loudness. R128 also uses new naming conventions and new units. Under R128, relative measurements are expressed in LU, or loudness units, and one LU is equivalent to one dB. Absolute measurement is defined as LUFS, or loudness units, full scale. Whenever you configure WaveLab to use the R128 standard, WaveLab switches automatically from dB to LU. R128 is used primarily in the broadcast world, but it's helpful in any situation dealing with loudness control. That's because R128 reflects the sensitivity of the human ear. You can call up the loudness meter by clicking on its tab in the workspace, if it's shown, or simply open the meters menu and select loudness meter. There are three types of loudness measurements. Integrated loudness, also called program loudness, reports how loud an audio piece is, on average, from start to finish. WaveLab uses a gate function to ignore long periods of silence that could throw off this value. There's also a special algorithm that compensates for momentary bursts of extremely loud material like explosions. Short-term loudness looks at the last three seconds and gives information about the loudness segments in it. Finally. Momentary loudness considers the last 400 milliseconds for instant feedback about real-time loudness. The boxes around the end of each meter show the loudness range for that meter. Now the idea here is that if you know the dynamic range, you can make better decisions about dynamics processing. For example, if you have a large dynamic range, in other words, a big box, then some careful compression may be in order. But if the box is very small, then there's very little difference or range between the loudest and softest portions. In this situation, you might need to back off the compression a little to let the music breathe. The purple bar is your target loudness value. You set this in the loudness meter settings dialog. What value you select depends on what kind of work you're mastering. If you're preparing a CD, then somewhere around minus 12 is likely to be your target. But if you're working on a soundtrack for broadcast or commercials, you'll reset this value to minus 23 LUFS as established by the EBU R128 standard. The yellow line is the loudness curve. If the curve has a peak, that loudness value appears often in the song. In a highly compressed piece of music, you may well only see one peak, which tells you the entire song is at or about that volume but a more dynamic piece will have several peaks. This means that some of the song was this loud, and some of the song was this loud. The higher the peak is on the curve, the more common that loudness level is in the song. Of course, another issue associated with loudness is clipping. And if a signal's loudness is right at the very limit of clipping, then it's possible for the digital-to-analog conversion itself to cause clipping. However, this kind of clipping won't show up on a standard digital peak meter, because a digital meter can only measure the signal before the digital-to-analog conversion. WaveLab 8 provides a solution in the form of a true peak meter. A true peak meter works by oversampling the signal four times then retaining the peak values to ensure that no clipping results from the digital-to-analog conversion.
there's a TruePeak LED which lights up to warn you if WaveLab detects clipping. Now, with a solid understanding of loudness in general, let's look at some of the loudness-specific processors. For example, the loudness normalizer. With this, it's possible to achieve a specific loudness, like this. And you can see its effects clearly represented on the meters.